This video aims to provide an uh, extended view of the different choices that you can take when we create the non-linear concrete material. So we are going to follow the same steps as we did in the last video, but we are going to just give provide some more information of the different personalization parameters, of the extra parameters that we didn't select or we didn't pay attention in the original video. Of course, you can get extended documentation and detailed documentation of the material properties on the different materials models by checking the Diana documentation. So, if we then create a new material, we can go by model, materials, and material, or just by clicking at this button, we open again the new material window. The first that we have to do here is change the material name as we did before. We will name it as concrete on linear. And then we need to choose the category. So as you remember before we stick to the concrete design codes, but now as we want something more sophisticated with more uh, personalization options, we are going to take the concrete and masonry. Here, if you go to the second convict box, we have uh, many options for the concrete model. Which is the best option and, with, uh, and with, uh, which one fits more to our uh, model? It's going to depend on the different uh, boundary conditions, the geometry, the materials, etc. But uh, this is something that I said before that is, uh, has been motivated in the different lectures. So we are going to go for the one that uh, you have been uh, given some information in the lecture that is total strain based crack model. The first input uh, configuration for the material model is found here down to the material model selection. In this case, for the specific reinforced concrete beam, we are going to leave all these aspects uh, unchecked, but uh, you might uh, consider to check some of uh, the different options for the development of the task too. The same primary configuration that you saw before in the window before is already here, so there is a way to change your opinion if you check or uncheck options that you wanted check or, or uncheck. The first uh, that we need to input is again the linear material properties for the linear uh, branch of the concrete. In that case, uh, the modulus was 30,000. Again, remember about the units. In my case, I have uh, user defined units, but if you are working with the by default units, so you didn't change anything during the model development or the viewing of the results. Temporarily, you are working with the Newton divided square meter unit. So consider this when you define your input. I like to work in Newton millimeter or square millimeter, but it's up to you how to use it. The Poisson, Poisson ratio, 20%, and the mass density that's not really necessary, but you can introduce it. Then the total strain base crack model. Here uh, you have three different options, fix, rotating, or rotating to fix. These models are intended to, to tell Diana how the crack has to develop on our model. So if we, if we check rotating base model, the crack is going to rotate uh, following the principal stresses. But for example, if we choose fix, we precondition the crack direction. But uh, this is very related with the kind of problem that we are working with and the geometry and many other parameters that are out of the scope of this example. So we are going to stick to the rotation, to the rotating uh, crack orientation model that is the simplest one. Well, then we need to define the crack bandwidth or effective length. This is a really important parameter when we define uh, total strain based crack models. Probably you remember from the lectures, but uh, then I'm going to give you some uh, tips or some considerations. So this crack bandwidth uh, must be related with your mesh size or your, me your mesh description. So and the, uh, this parameter means how the damage is distributed in your mesh. So as you know, the mesh is a continuous element that cannot be split in different elements. 
So when we have a crack within an element, we need to tell the model or we need to tell the, the, the Ayana how to consider this damage and spread into the structure. So in that case, uh, using these total strain based crack models, we use the parameter crack bandwidth as a, as a parameter to define the length where we are going to spread the damage uh, of each crack. There are many considerations in order to define this parameter, this configuration parameter, but uh, we are going to use as crack bandwidth or effective length the average uh, separation uh, of the cracks that we can calculate directly from the codes. In our case, is 150 millimeters. So we are ready to move to the tensile behavior of our material that uh, is going to define how our material is going to behave under tensile stresses. Again, Diana offers here uh, many configuration options or many different material models for the last for the tensile behavior. So we have since the fully or linear elastic to the brittle, fully brittle, and then we have different uh, other shapes of our tensile curve that uh, are going to define how it behaves after cracking and previously to cracking. In our case, we are going to use Hortic, that is uh, the one that you got uh, documentation in the different lectures. Hortic is essentially based on the on two different parameters: tensile strength and then energy fracture. If you remember. The energy fracture corresponds to the area that we have uh, under our curve. And then the tensile strength is the value that we can reach before the concrete starts cracking. So we are ready to introduce our parameters. We already know what uh, they mean. Uh, the tensile strength is uh, 3 pascals, and the energy fracture is uh, 0, 0, 0.075. But uh, what about these other parameters? These uh, three other parameters are uh, like advanced uh, parameters that are meant to modify the standard behavior of the Hordic material model or the Hordic tensile behavior. So uh, we need to modify or uh, change uh, these parameters if we want to overwrite the by default options. So the first one is just to define a residual tensile strength. If we consider that our concrete uh, has uh, a remaining tensile capacity after it reaches uh, the maximum strains, the strain, we can uh, just put a value here, one megapascal, three, that means it doesn't lose any tensile capacity, or, what, or whatever so and then we will have always uh, include some uh, tensile capacity on, uh, in the element the other two options are meant to reduce the capacity of the material due to cracking so we have, if we have lateral cracking we need to use uh, any option that we can see here to consider this effect on the tensile behavior or, of our material. So if we have lateral cracking, the material behavior must be different. And the same for the Poisson's ratio reduction. Then in the case that we want to model the material properties in a more realistic way, considering different other effects, we need to uh, use these parameters. In our case, we don't need to go uh, that deep, so we can stick to the default parameters for the material. Then we can move to the last parameter of configuration for concrete nonlinear. That is the composite behavior. If you see inside the convict box, we can see different material models, different ways to reproduce the composite behavior. But uh, that has uh, already implemented in Diana. But uh, here we are going to stick to the Thorenfeld, that is the one that you also has uh, seen in the lectures. So if you want to know more detailed information, you can refer to the notes, the lecture notes. Uh, the Thorenfeld um, model, it's uh, pretty easy. It's an adjustment of the different experimental data. And it only requires the compressive strength 
as input parameter. The rest of the configuration parameters corresponds to the personalization or the adapting this core to or uh, to the specific problem. For instance, by changing the end and key parameters, we can modify the behavior pre and post peak. And then the other relevant parameter is the length scale parameter that this uh, tries to adjust the curve to our element size. So this is a pretty important parameter just in case we have localization of failure of concrete compressive failure in our model. So when you detect this kind of failure, you can try to adjust your curve to the element size that you have. The last parameter is just to uh, consider confinement of the concrete and it uh, will modify the concrete behavior, the concrete curve, uh, regarding the different confinement models that you can see here. For this specific model, we can just stick to the default options, so the compressive strength, and leave the other uh, modification parameters in white. Thank you for your attention and see you soon.